David Letterman's top ten highlights of Sarah Palin's trip to New York. Uh, number two, uh, what makeup at Bloomingdale's to update her slutty flight attendant look. Ah, the slutty flight attendant look. That's uh, that's good, Dave. Uh, then in the monologue, he made a joke about Sarah Palin's daughter. Not Bristol, who's already had a baby and is 18 or 19 or something like that now. But little girl Willow, who who is only 14 years old. Listen to this. One awkward moment, though, during the game. Maybe you heard about it. Maybe you saw it on one of the highlight reels. One awkward moment for Sarah Palin at the Yankee game. During the seventh inning, her daughter was knocked up by Alex Rodriguez. Jack Cafferty on CNN. Would you rather listen to a speech by Sarah Palin or a speech by Newt Gingrich? Go to CNN, or would you rather just stick needles in your eyes? Go to <laughs> CNN.com slash Cafferty file, and you can post a comment on my blog. A wolf ought to be ashamed for laughing at that. That wasn't funny. Blitzer usually holds his cards a little closer to his vest. Uh, a alleged comedian named Chuck Nice uh, tried a Palin joke. And I'm going to say this, and please don't take it the way it sounds. But Sarah Palin, to the GOP, this is what i got to say. She is very much like herpes. She's not going away. Okay, that's it. That's not, uh, don't take it like it sounds. No, 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 don't. Call her herpes. Uh, say uh, listening to her is a better choice would be to stick needles in her eyes, in your eyes. Her 14-year-old daughter, we can make rape jokes about her in uh, Yankee Stadium. And uh, Letterman says she has the slutty flight attendant look. Now, John Ziegler went on, uh, he went on MSNBC, which is always trying to attack Sarah Palin, uh, with uh, Contessa Brewer. It was not pretty. Here's uh, Ziegler and Contessa. How would you feel John, about that, that's Contessa? that's actually happened to me, and I'm fine. I'm still here. I, I'm, I'm Really? David Letterman joked about you being no, slutty and, and about your not daughter David being David Letterman, but it's happened up? to me publicly. Okay, we'll, we'll change topics. Okay. How about this? Uh, yeah, well, uh, Contessa, how about this? Jay Leno, also on NBC, back when he was the host of The Tonight Show, and wow. basically dissed her. Right. And surprise, 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 she gave an incredibly classy answer, far, uh, showing far more class than clearly most people on this network have. I don't really know what to do with that. You know, I was honestly, I'm here to, to give you an opportunity. I consider myself a common sense thinker. I, I haven't attacked you. And for you to come on and use those sort of insults, insults me. Thank you so much for your time. I do appreciate that. Okay. Much well, more news you guys ahead are on it. Cut the mic, please. Uh, much more news mic. ahead on MSNBC. Cut the mic, please. I wanted to hear what uh, the rest of John Ziegler's sentence was. This was, what was it, an hour ago? Two hours ago? John, that was uh, quite a little performance. Uh, congratulations on getting a public demand to cut your mic. <laughs> well, John, unfortunately, it's to be expected on MSNBC. Uh, for is. the record, what I was trying to say there was uh, that this network deserves uh, those insults and a heck of a lot more for their coverage of Barack Obama, because after all, uh, Monica Lewinsky never dreamed of doing to Bill Clinton some of the things that MSNBC and NBC have done for Barack Obama. So that was what I was going to say, but my mic was cut off. Oh, you were going to say that. It would have been cut off then, too. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, um, but you know what? A little interesting backstory, John, and I think you'll appreciate this knowing the ins and outs of, of cable news network uh, or infotainment in the case of um, MSNBC, agenda-oriented infotainment, uh, and how it works. I was supposed to with Nora O'Donnell today. Now, I don't know how much you remember, but uh, that shocked me because Nora O'Donnell and I, if you can see on YouTube, have had a couple of knockdown drag outs that most people think I got the best of her on, and she has committed numerous uh, uh, accounts of media malpractice on both me and Governor Palin and on my film, Media Malpractice. So I was stunned that I was supposed to go on with Nora O'Donnell. Twenty minutes before I went on, I was said, I was told, all right, we're set to go at 8.20 uh, Pacific time with Nora O'Donnell. Twenty-five seconds before I go on, they tell me, you'll be on with Contessa Brewer. And I was stunned. I said, well, what happened to Nora O'Donnell? And get this, John, MSNBC producer with a straight face tells me, well, we had to make a change because of the breaking news involving the Supreme Court case with Chrysler, which occurred last night. <laughs> so clearly, Nora O'Donnell had ducked me. Contessa Brewer was not prepared for what she was going to get. I'm stunned that MSNBC had me on, but I hope that I expose, and what I'm sure will be my last appearance on MSNBC, their clear agenda that continues against Sarah Palin even to this day. They, well, there's they, no, no question. They, they seem they to understand that people like her. 
Well, I think it goes a little bit further than that, John. I think there's two things going on here. I think that at some level they know they did a hit job on her during the campaign, and they're trying to rationalize it. They're trying to prove that they didn't lie through their teeth during the campaign. And so every chance they get uh, to try to show, see, we were right about her, uh, they do so. But then there's also the, the notion that they do see her as a threat. They, they're clearly ideologically opposed to her. And I think there's a third element, which you, of course, will appreciate, and that is that everyone knows she's great for ratings. Whether you're praising her or you're ripping into her, uh, Sarah Palin is a figure that people tune into, they want to hear about, and so it's really a perfect storm situation, and that's why it continues even today with just unprecedented and ridiculous attacks, which she can take on herself. She is the, the least whiny public figure I've ever run into, the, one of the most courageous, but when it comes to your family and your teenage daughters, that's a completely different issue, and John, I have some breaking news here for you. I just got a, an email from the Palin people with a statement about David David Letterman from Sarah Palin. Would you like me to share that? Yeah, with you? please. Uh, Sarah Palin says, "Quote concerning Letterman's comments about my young daughter, and I doubt he'd ever dare make such comments about anyone else's daughter. Laughter incited by sexually perverted comments made by a 62-year-old male celebrity aimed at a 14-year-old girl is not only disgusting, but it reminds us some Hollywood New York entertainers have a long way to go in understanding what the rest of America understands that acceptance of inappropriate sexual comments about an underage." girl who could be anyone's daughter contributes to the atrociously high rate of sexual exploitation of minors by older men who use and abuse others, unquote Governor Sarah Palin. Wow, uh, that's a pretty strong response there from the governor against Well, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but did she call him a sexual pervert? Well, I don't think she did. I think she she may have been saying that this is the type of thing that can lead to sexual perversion yeah, among uh, men who are in David Letterman's demographic. <laughs> but okay. I have to tell you, you know, there is something going on here, John. David Letterman has gone out of his way on numerous occasions to say how hot he thinks Sarah Palin is. In fact, even on the night in question, he said uh, that he found her to be extremely attractive. So uh, I think that there's some passive aggression going on here with David Letterman. It's probably more deeply seated than we realize. He he is on his little jihad against anything that is on the conservative or Republican side of things. He just oh, doesn't he's totally like brought them. into the Keith Oberman view of the world. In fact, he would quote Keith Oberman in interviews that he did with John McCain uh, during the campaign. And and one of the things I said in this Contessa Brewer interview was I called Keith Oberman out on lying about Sarah Palin allegedly committing plagiarism last week, and Contessa Brewer was a bit flummoxed by that. I think I'm one of the few that ever got away on MSNBC with calling Oberman a liar. But uh, as I said, it's probably my last appearance in MSNBC, and if it is, so be it. I hope I made my point. You are a liar. Well, I, I think you did. John Ziegler, listen, I'm glad to have seen you on the air there. I'm glad that you uh, got your mic cut off, and I'm glad we were able to let you complete the sentence here on this program, because uh, if nothing else, we like to perform a public service. Yes, John, I, I just want to let you know what a freaking idiot you, you are. I have to tell you, you need to pull your head out of your ass. Are you a sympathizer? Yes, I'm a little bit of a sympathizer. And Give me a break! Hanging up on Moron since 2006. Do I still have to go to that etiquette class, Angry Rich? Now, John Gibson. 